Thank you everybody for uh, joining us this morning, Wednesday 12th of June here at Hotel Basel. Thank you, Carl and uh, Rain, Bardi, Carl Lindstrom and Bardi for uh, offering us this opportunity to hear more about their work. This is the first uh, artist talk of a series of three at Hotel Basel. It's the second year we're doing that and we're very happy about how it uh, is turning out and we're very curious to hear more stories by our attending artists at the fair. Um, this uh, morning we're going to talk uh, a little bit about the work of uh, Ren Bardi and Karl Lindstrom, two artists or an artist couple, uh, married by the way, if I'm right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Ren um, works a lot uh, uh, with the staged uh, photography, as the picture you can see on the screen. Uh, here she grew up uh, in France in the countryside, if I'm not wrong, then studied in Paris, went to the big city, but that was not big enough, so she moved around the globe uh, to LA, where she's currently based, together with uh, Carl, and in between she went through a few other cities, some of which uh, were London, for example. Um, Carl is a filmmaker that started off as a photographer, actually, and is now kind of circling back to photography in uh, cooperation with uh, uh, with Rain a little bit at least, <laughs> yeah. and he is the director of the film uh, Rain in Bardi that has its Europe premiere tonight, uh, opposite of this building, the Tuile de Bikino Atelier. We will Queen of Parody. Queen of Parody, sorry. <laughs> Rain, uh, mixed up, lost in language with yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Which will show tonight, and we will talk about uh, later in this talk. So we would like to start uh, with uh, looking into how the two of you, or particularly Ren, works uh, with this project that is exhibited, by the way, at the, the Hook Gallery uh, downstairs at the fair. If you'd like to see the original works, go uh, down there and see it. Um, so Ren, um, can you please elaborate a little bit on the process on how you work? If you, if you look at this picture, for example, it looks like it could just as well be staged in a studio, but apparently it's not. Yeah. So how did this come to be? Yeah. So for all my uh, images, I uh, imagine uh, the scenes at first, and then I make uh, some maquettes. Uh, so um, usually they are like paintings and collage. And um, so that's like the storyboard for one of the storyboard. So um, I'll imagine those scenes and then make the maquette, and then I scout for sometimes like many years to find the locations that I imagine in my head. And uh, so sometimes it's challenging because I can't find exactly what I imagine in my head, but I don't really shoot uh, the images until we find the location. And then once I found the location, I, uh, so I create all the costumes and the props and the sculptures that are part of each images. So maybe we can show one so that's, for example, one of the maquettes that led to this image. So this image is shot on the roof of a church in Los Angeles. And um, in uh, each image, uh, it's also a performance uh, part because I have to be inside of the, the images and then we shoot. So Carl works with me, so he's the one who is shooting all the images. And then after, I modify the saturation of the blue. But everything in the images um, is real. So it's the uh, same location, um, same texture. So I keep everything, even the texture of the sky. Um, I just switch the saturation. And if I can add a cool thing too, um, besides this one, very few times she'll actually be inspired by a location itself. For the majority of her images, she actually creates the, the maquettes, those paintings, first. And that's why it takes so long to find the locations, because we have to find a location that matches her imagination, you know? And so, like, I've never heard of anyone really working in that way, so she kind of works in an opposite way. 
which I think is pretty cool. You know, it is pretty cool. It's yeah. pretty hard to believe when we look at the maquettes and then oh, the yeah. result of it because they're really very similar. And I was actually curious to know how, how you do that. How, how much time does it take you to actually create one of these images? If you say it takes a long time to find yeah. the location, or how do you? Find a few the years, I would say. For example, this one is shot in a salt mine in California, and I wanted to shoot um, in a salt mine because the salt is uh, even more ref uh, reflective uh, than the snow. So I wanted to, to see, uh, you know, to, to have like a, a mountain that was very, very bright. And, um, and this mountain is actually as steep as we see it here. Yeah, it is. All right. So there's also quite some danger involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each uh, scene is uh, a little adventure in itself. Yeah. So why, why would you say you do what you do? Because it's everything I, uh, I love. Uh, so I like each part of the process, for example, even like creating the costumes, finding the material, scouting, uh, imagining the scenes. Uh, it's a combination of everything I always uh, loved and I feel uh, yeah it's exactly what I I would want to do right now with. And, and what is it that inspires you for example do you have like a real life experience that inspires you inspires you or, uh, or an art show you go and see or so I would say I'm more inspired by um, small things actually so all the very, for example, in LA, there are a lot of very um, minimal, minimalist uh, buildings. So architecture that is very simple in shapes, almost uh, as if it's like two dimensional and not three dimensional. So as if it's like a, a fake background, I'm inspired obviously by very intense colors, toys, um, very harsh lighting. Mm -hmm. So I shoot everything around noon. Mm -hmm. um, those are my main inspiration. I can add to that maybe. Uh, because we've been together for a long time, I kind of saw how she started, you know, from the very beginning, like from her initial ideas. And her inspirations are true, you know, she's inspired by light and all these things. But for her, it's a bit different. From, from an outside perspective, I felt she had this incredible drive to uh, go for her vision, you know? And it was something that she could only see. I mean, it's, she has very original, unique work. I mean, you know, I've never seen anything like it before, but, you know, she's, in the beginning, she was trying to explain to me, you know, like, oh, I want it, you know, I want it like this. And so I was kind of just following her uh, and, and doing the best I could. But um, it took, you know, it took a while for her to finally be able to achieve her, her, what she saw in her mind. But when she did, I mean, it was like, that was it, you know? And uh, to see how she st stuck with it from the very beginning, and a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, you know, you're, what are you talking about? You're crazy, you shouldn't do this. Like, what do you think you're doing, you know? Um, but she actually pushed through all the way until she got what she wanted, and I think, uh, that was really something that inspired me, you know, so. How do you know a project is concluded? Um, so when I look at the image and that there is nothing I would, uh, I would change. Um, so all the images that are out there that I produced, I, uh, when I look at them, even years after, I, uh, I know it's exactly what I imagine and it's a feeling, I would say, and there's nothing I would uh, change or, you know, adjust. Or... So there's never a point of hesitation, you just know. No, it, yeah, but it takes a while, that's the thing. Is, uh... And at the beginning, for example, for to get exactly my colors in printing, it was very uh, long, uh, because there are not a lot of papers that allow um, those kind of bright colors to show really, uh, exactly how I imagine so but once I found it I knew uh, I knew it was uh, done you smiled when Ren said that it was <laughs> done but it yeah because <laughs> it really is that it's like a lightning bolt kind of hits the the image or something it hits where we're sitting and it's like 
that's it, you know? And it, if, you know, she'll sit on an image sometimes for a while because it's not, you know, uh, what it is. And then, you know, it'll emerge and it'll become like, she'll do what she needs to get the colors right or whatever. And, and then it's like, bam, and that is it. And, it. and it's been like that for years now. Like, in, same as when she finds a location, we can look for many, many different locations. And uh, I'll be saying like, okay, this is great. You know, this is what we need. You know, uh, look, we have this. Okay, maybe it's not perfect. And she'll go, no, no way. You know, not until it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> this answer can sometimes also be a little bit frustrating working in this collaborative, collaborative way. Uh, no, it's not frustrating. Uh, I mean, in the beginning, it took me a little while to get used to that because I came from a different, you know, from a photography background as well. And for me, I was a bit more loose with like my locations and stuff. But because she was looking for something so specific, uh, you know, but I got right on board with it. And, you know, I, I actually like it because when I see that she sees it, it it's like the clouds kind of open up a bit and I can see it too, you know? So uh, I think it's cool. And, it, and then it shows, of course, in the image, you know, uh, when, when a viewer looks at it, they, it's for a reason, it's for a purpose. And I think people feel that, you know. So, Ren, what do you personally like about your work? So, colors first. <laughs> <laughs> so, I uh, so for for this uh, last uh, series, I um, yeah maybe I could explain that for each series I work with mainly three colors all the time. And uh, it's colors that I, I don't get uh, sick of. So each time I, I look at the work and it's with those colors, it's, um, it's the main thing I love. Yeah, I would say this is my main. Uh, so what made you decide to um, stage yourselves in your artwork? That's a good. Uh, Question. So at first, I didn't know I would uh, be inside of my uh, work, and um, I thought I would uh, hire uh, someone, and we would travel with this person, and we would shoot her in the different location. And um, I realized it was a bit uh, uh, challenging on a practical way at first. And so we shot the first image actually in New York from my last series. And uh, I decided to be inside of the image. And this is how it started. So at first it was for practical reasons. And then uh, we realized with the time that it adds so much more to uh, the work because each image now is like an auto-portrait. I feel I'm the only one who can really feel how I want the body to feel, uh, you know, the feeling inside of the body. And for me to uh, explain it to someone else, it, um, it would be totally different. And my work would be totally different, I know it, if it was somebody else. Right. Has your process of how you work evolved over time, and if so, how? Uh, so we work uh, with a very, very reduced team. <laughs> <laughs> it's just are. us. Um, so it hasn't really evolved at this uh, level. Um, something uh, that I realized over the last few years is that each time we... So the day of the shoot, if I don't really follow the original idea, so the maquette that I drew, if I'm a bit tempted to do something different, it doesn't work. And so at the beginning, I, I was tempted to do you know, so for example, for this image, maybe I would be like on this side and try, you know, I would be tempted the day of the shoot, but each time we tried, um, it never way. worked. Yeah, so that's something I learned. Um, yeah, then, yeah. Okay, so it seemed to be a very uh, elaborate process or a very well-oiled machine, the two of you working together in this. Carl, what made you decide to do this documentary uh, uh, Queen of Paradis, and that will be shown tonight. Uh, well, because uh, you know, I, I felt well. There, I guess there's two reasons. So, first is that uh, as a person who loves film and as a filmmaker, I you know, I long to see 
uh, an artist or something when it's taking place, you know? So especially in documentary film, so much about artists and things like that, you're looking back from uh, maybe after the artist is dead and you have experts talking about it, or uh, it's when they're very old and they're, you know, like the good old days back, you know, when we did this, it was so great. Uh, this was really an opportunity to see uh, a young artist doing like the work right in front of you, you know, and seeing it come to life like right now, you know. So I think that was really, a, a, you know, an interesting part. Um, the other thing is that she does, she puts herself in these really like, I mean, dangerous, really, positions. And uh, they, you know, and some of the image, like this is a more, uh, pretty straightforward one where she's standing, but if you've seen any of her other work, she's, you know, she's somewhere, she's hanging off of a cable or, or uh, dangling off a roof, or even the one we saw before where she was up on top of the, it looked like a castle, and she's with uh, binoculars. Uh, she has to actually climb up a building, you know, and she's about uh, 15 or 20 meters on a little ledge uh, with, you know, a few meters down here and, and 15 meters to concrete there, and she's balancing like that on top of the, the thing. But when you see the photo, oh yeah, here we go. When you see the photo, you go, oh wow, that looks very interesting, you know? Uh, it touches people in different ways. However, uh, when you have that added uh, dimension of like, wow, she's really there, and, and then in the film you see it and you go, oh my gosh, you know? There's something about the reality of it that I think captures uh, viewers when they see it. And at some of the festivals we've been to, uh, I mean, that's always, you know, at certain parts in the film, people are literally like this, like, oh my gosh, you know, like, I can't believe that she's doing it, you know? Um, so I think that's a really, uh, from a filmmaker, that's one of the things I love about uh, Ren and about the film that we made. Do you think it also kind of um, takes off the, maybe artificiality that may come across from the images, that it make, makes the images more real? Because they're um, very surreal, of course. But I think the images stand on their own completely, with, with or without the film. Uh, the film, though, is, you know, from my perspective, looking at Ren. And uh, that was our understanding uh, in the film. You know, she's, she agreed to let me film her. And, but it was my thing, you know, she said, okay, do whatever you have to do. Um, but I think you touched on something interesting, which is uh, when we have, when we're surrounded by so much fake CGI and things like that in photography, photoshops, uh, and you know, in film, we have people jumping off airplanes and landing in jacuzzis. And, you know, it's like what there's no uh, connection, you know. And I think when you see some in in this film, when you see Ren out there really putting herself in these situations and doing it for real, you know, to capture and to make her images, uh, I think it's something, it's a bit refreshing nowadays to see that. You go, oh my gosh, okay. Maybe she's not jumping out of an airplane or, do, you know, landing on Mars or whatever, but like, it's, it touches us in a way more uh, important way, I think. All right, shall we have a look at the trailer of the film? Sure, uh, yeah, before, the, before you play it, I'll just introduce, so, Queen of Paradis, uh, we just started taking it around to festivals. We've actually won some awards uh, in the States. Uh, like we won Best Film in LA Indie Film Festival, which was really cool, um, and a few other uh, great festivals so far. And uh, we're gonna be playing it this afternoon at- No, tonight. Oh yeah, tonight at 8, 8 p.m. at the theater across the street. So Kino Colt okay. Theater. Um, so you guys are all invited uh, if you want to come. Uh, so this is the trailer.
self-regulating your focus, uh, certain insecurities, but at the same time, uh, has the strength to want to to create the kind of you know applause and the kind of march of the whole world. I think that that pleasure, as well as a little feeling of strangeness, that's surrealism, and that's a moment of joy in your life. And thank you. Okay. Let's wrap it up. Thank okay. you for taking us on this journey of how you work together. And please join us for the journey, the road trip in the film tonight at uh, 8 p.m. at the Cinema Camera across the street. I'd also like to point out that we have two more artist, artist talks coming up. One on Friday morning, 10.30, same location, uh, with uh, Costas Manos and Christopher Thomas. Uh, it, this uh, it will, artist talk will circle around the portrait of a city. Uh, specifically Los Angeles and Tokyo. And on Saturday, at the same time, same location, with uh, Simon Wang, who uh, let's, will circle around the use of color, mainly. Again, more abstract than your work, but very colorful and strong emotions. Um, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this little talk of ours, and enjoy the fair, and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.